classroom. That's you, right. You don't. That's right. It's time, to, it's time to resume and go. I got another class coming up in just under an hour. Yeah, I know. We actually kind of had to hurry up a little bit. <laughs> it's a long day of uh, classroom. Well, I had timed this out before, and I, it went faster last time. But, you know, <laughs> that's how it goes. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rolling. Right. It's too late. We've already started. We have. I just want to say, Ryan, welcome aboard. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty awesome. Hope to see you in a bunch of our classes. Okay, so let's see. Um, I am going to take a look at the process of static meshing next. Now, guys, static meshing takes hours. All I'm going to do here is show you, show the, you the basics, the of basics, and some tips that will make it a lot easier on you. And then I'm going to open up a copy of the level that's got all the static meshes in place. Okay, if that makes you scream, my apologies in advance. Adding static meshes is a pretty basic thing inside of UDK. Uh, all you got to do is jump into the content browser. I would just switch over my filter to static meshes, and you have all these different meshes you can add. The list goes on and on and on. Um, and a lot of them come with. This would also be the point at your design process where you would start grabbing artists to start making static meshes for you. Now, if you were designing a level and you knew you needed a particular mesh in a certain spot, and you didn't have it, uh, then, you know, that may be a good time for you to maybe drop in a, a temporary BSP brush uh, so that you can you know, work with your level and you can test things and you can see how things feel. And then later on, when your mesh actually gets done and textured and looks all nice and happy, then you can load that up inside of uh, UDK and then import it in, delete out your BSP brush and so on. For purposes of example, what we're going to do is grab, it doesn't really matter what mesh, but let me see here. If I go under HU, it's the name of one of the packages in here. It's kind of all the human stuff from uh, Unreal Tournament. We have things like pipes and tanks. We have these generators. I like these generators. They're just cool looking. So if I select one of these, check this out. We can come over here into our view, and I can just hit S, and I can click and drop that right in. Now, some things to know about that process. One, I mentioned this earlier. If you hit S and you fly away, that's because under your preferences, you have flight control or flight camera control set to use WASD. I like to set that to only when the right mouse button is held because then I still get access to some of these hotkeys. If you don't have that, you can use Alt S, but Alt S is actually a little different. Let me show you. If we hit S and click anywhere on any surface, we just get another copy of this mesh. Well, that's fantastic, but if we hold Alt-S instead, the mesh gets rotated to align to the surface. That is extremely handy when you have to place stuff along walls or maybe on ceilings. Awesome, because you can just drop it down, flip it 90 degrees, and it's already in place and good to go. Now, you can generally go crazy uh, in uh, with your static meshes. At some point, you will start to bog down your machine, but... The idea of duplicating static meshes is very important. Yeah, you really, you pay the most for the first That's copy right. of every static mesh. Every other copy, again, uh, really, you're just sending a lot of transform data around your video card, and that keeps things nice and optimized. And uh, Alex wants me to mention, for more models, you can visit utmapping.wikidot.com forward slash static dash mesh dash catalog. So there you go. You've been pimped, and I've been nice to you. He said it's epics. It probably is epics, given the name, but I, I, I did yeah. what he asked, because <laughs> I'm awesome. Because we're and rushing on time. And very, yeah, I, I'm, I'm Russian right now. Everybody is Russian. Uh, so... That's really the basics. There's a couple of other things that I do like to mention, though. If you've dropped in a static mesh, you can do it in a couple of other ways. You can right-click and add a static mesh there if you want to do it the long way. If you have a static mesh floating in space, you can tap the end key and drop it down on top of whatever surface is directly underneath it. And, uh, and that's really cool, so definitely use that to your advantage. But at some point... After digging through the meshes and getting stuff in and placing and... Yeah, you can save that. Let's see. Will this crash? No, it didn't. That's amazing. You will get something that looks <laughs> vaguely like this. I'm <laughs> so surprised. I, I am surprised it didn't crash. I don't know what to tell you. Every other time I've opened a level, Unreal just decides to crap out on me. So, this is pretty much the same thing. <laughs> right? I was 
There we go. That's better. Yeah. <laughs> You're so, just making my day. I know. We've got to hurry things up a little quick. And here you Click, go. And we're done. <laughs> but really, uh, I mean, the, the truth of the matter is, I've shown you everything to it. Everything else is just artistic differences. Now, I will give you some tips, all right, some things that I think you should keep in mind. But really, to me, these are just kind of personal preferences. When static meshing. When adding in static meshes, especially if you're digging them out of the existing packages, uh, but also when you're when you're building your own or bringing your own in, always think function first or function over form. However you want to look at that. Don't you just love those levels when they just cram like there's just a pipe? Yeah, like it just, just it doesn't look like it's kind it of like floating be. a half a foot above the floor, and it's not attached to anything. It has no functional meaning whatsoever. Exactly, uh, if, and you know this actually lends itself to a lot of different ideas. So, like, are you going to have lights in your level? Which I mean, generally you're going to need some, otherwise it's going to be a very boring black level. Make sure that those have a static mesh equivalent whenever possible. What do I mean by that? Have a light source. So if you have light in an area, make sure that there's some static mesh of a lamp nearby. All right, now let's go back over here. And I just want to kind of give a breakdown of what I've got here. So top story, I just have, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, and somebody, uh, I'm sorry, I just noticed over the question. Somebody wanted me to mention uh, texture scaling on meshes, i.e. don't take a tiny mesh and make it massive or vice versa. That is true, but I don't want to get too far into right. so many little nuances. But really, you will notice the quality difference. If you make a tiny little mesh with a tiny little texture and you make it huge, it will look like poo, and, and you'll see that. And so out here in the outer area, I just sort of made a little landing bay out of static meshes. Pretty basic. Inside of here, now take a look. I'm going to hit W and turn off my static meshes so you can see the difference between the two, right? The first thing I did was I added some pillars to make it look like the roof is being held up by something. In between these pillars, I added these cool little braces. That was the very first thing I did because that gave the whole building some functionality. It made it look like it was there for a purpose. I did that on all these floors. In fact, on the lower floors, I started adding additional supports. Next, I didn't want people to walk off the edge here, so I added some railing. It's just one static mesh each, copied over and over and over. And I put a little bit of trim on the inside so you weren't looking at the very edge of the surface. It just looked nicer. Yeah, everything should be trimmed out. Everything should be trimmed out. Whenever, I mean, yeah, like even here, doorway. Yeah, always, out. with some sort of static meshes. Covered up the walls. These are actually door meshes. Uh, I don't know why they're there. It just looked better than a flat wall. Uh, then I stacked up some barrels, and that was it. Over here where my lifts are, I repeated a whole bunch of static meshes to make it look like there was a track. It's really just a bunch of little meshes copied over and over again that looks like a track should be going there. Put rails on each side of the lift. Next floor. This Doesn't this look like crazy over-the-top complicated? But here, check it out. I found this mesh that has just like some repeated hoses. Scaled it up to go to floor to ceiling and duped it off over and over again across the back wall. Next, we have these great big gas tanks that look like that. Scaled it out, made a stack of three of them. Copied it over to completely fill in the wall. Can't have gas tanks without pipes and meters. Well, you need something to hold them in place, right? Oh, that's right? true too. Braces. So it put some big braces up to hold everybody in. Then... Found these meshes with know, little pipe and meter things on them. Dupe those over and over again. And then little fire hydrants. So it looks like you can connect to each one and get some liquid out of them. That's it. There's really not that many meshes there. They're just duped over and over again. And it starts to look a whole lot more visually interesting. And somebody did mention, this is a really good point. Uh, it's a really good idea to open up some of Epic's maps and see how they're really duping and making the most out of static meshes. So then, down here at the very bottom, more tanks, some chain link fences. We have generators on the ceiling. We have generators on the ceiling. Can you believe that? And then more wires. I made a network of hoses and pipes, and really that was just a lot of tedious placement of stuff. Take your time. <laughs> Out here... Rock walkway. Hooray! Goes right out to the pond, which is surrounded by rocks. 
trim everything. Yeah, <laughs> more hooray. By the way, these rocks don't have a collision mesh, so that's a lot of fun when you're showing this off to people. And some more interesting looking pipes and tanks and things outside, because that was fun. So yeah, that's and then of course there's the trees. You can't forget the trees. The trees really make this. So that brings us to our next thing I want to show, and that's the addition of foliage. Now this is one of those things that I'm not going to show you like the entire process of painting this for hours and hours and making it look pretty. I want to get you the basics of making this happen and make it dangerous, and then you can start playing with it on your own. But there is this cool new-ish foliage mode inside of UDK, which is pretty amazing. Here's how this works. You open it up, and it looks a whole lot like the landscape system. You have a brush size, and you have this little area down here, which shouldn't have anything in it. It does, because this is a, a level that I opened up. So let's go ahead and remove all of these out. This is what you'll see by default. It says, drag static meshes from the content browser into this area. I can do that. Let me get the content browser over here. And let's sort by foliage. Foliage. So, anything you want to add? Let's see. Well, I like this guy. It's a banana plant. Banana plants are awesome. Just drag it in there. Let's see. What else might we want to add? Oh, here's some grass. Grass is amazing. Let's add that in there. And let's see. What else? Um, lily pads. I don't know about lily pads. Ooh, a, a fern. It's actually, it's just a big plant, according to this. Or a plant big. Let's add that as well. And you'll see all these guys are now listed. Now, let me stretch this out a little. Make that a little easier to see. Now, I'm going to get my content browser out of the way. We have all kinds of funny little things we can do to the size here. We can change the overall density. That's how thick these are going to be placed. We can change their radius, uh, how close they're going to be to one another. We can change their scale. We can start adding randomization. All kinds of fun stuff for each individual one. But see how they're highlighted orange? That tells you what you're going to be painting. So what I'm going to do is turn off everything but the grass for now. And you'll notice whenever we mouse over the terrain, we get this brush. Now this brush is huge. I'm going to take my brush size and pull it from 512 down to something slightly more manageable. Just like landscape, hold down control and start dragging, and you'll start painting down these meshes. It's really simple. If they're not dense enough for you, come over to your density setting and crank that up. We can say lift that up to 500, and we get a lot more grass. If you want to paint something else, turn this off, because you can paint multiple stuff at the same time if you feel like it. Uh, grab the banana plants, for example, and we can start painting those. If you want to get rid of some foliage that you're adding, choose the thing you want to get rid of, shift and control, and you can erase that out. Nice. And the cool thing is, it is selective. So if I have banana plants selected, you'll notice I can just work on those. Then later on, I can go back to the grass, and I can say, you know what, now let's get rid of the grass. Let's bring in some more banana plants, and then erase more grass. Well, I have both of them selected. Right <laughs> you do. I do. That's okay. I'll hit undo. <laughs> wow, undo works so nice. Undo works. Don't jinx it, but it does. Shh, yeah. Shh. So now I can just erase out the grass and leave the banana plants alone. All right. So that's just kind of a basic look at foliage painting, okay? I, I, I can't really go into a whole bunch of stuff, but you do have a paint bucket. I did want to kind of mention that, so you can just uh, click and drop a whole bunch down all at once. But it's not. So uh, let's <laughs> so we have foliage. I, was, I didn't even have that in my notes, so I totally just winged that to show you guys how to paint in some foliage. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the process of lighting. Lighting is one of those things you can teach an entire class. Yeah, easily? I'm just uh, Several and, classes? Yeah, hopefully you guys understand that. Adding lights in Unreal is pretty easy. Let me go back to camera mode. Now, I will throw this out, even though I don't get to explore all of the different light types in Unreal, but I do want to kind of segue to a little bit of lecture for just a moment. If you go under your actor class's browser and take a look at lights, you have all kinds of lights. You have directional lights, which is kind of like a sun. It's infinitely far away, and the light doesn't diverge. It's all parallel beams of light. Mm -hmm. You have a point light, which is a single point in space that emits in a full 360-degree sphere. 
So uh, you'll get light in all directions. You have a skylight. Uh, this is used for simulating uh, like domish lights from the sky, not something we're going to be playing with specifically. And you have spotlights. It's exactly what you think it is. It is a cone of light. As you expand each one of these, you'll see there is a subclass uh, of just about each one of them called a dominant light. Dominant. Yeah. A dominant light is a very important thing for Unreal. Uh, it's kind of the way you're going to create suns, specifically. You don't want to overdo these. Generally, you only want each surface in your level to be affected by one dominant light and one dominant light only. That means for the most part, on a simple level, you're just going to have one great big dominant directional light, and that will be considered your sun. Now, the reason there are dominant lights is to handle the problem of making sure you can have a nice big sunlight that still casts light that looks good on characters. Uh, it's, it's just a way that Epic tackled the problem. It's just I just want to mention, you don't want to just fill your scene with dominant lights. And Unreal will warn you if you do this. Mm -hmm. It'll say, hey, you've got stuff to, that is being affected by more than one dominant light. Don't do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is mostly just stick to point lights for this example. At the moment, I have a lot of work lights in. Work lights don't mean anything. They're just here so that if you happen to switch over to lit mode, you can kind of see what you're doing. Um, I'm going to delete these out, or assume that maybe you didn't have any in your map. Adding a light is generally pretty easy. You can just hit L and click in place. If, and now let, let me see if this actually works or if I'm crazy. Um, now we'll just we'll just stick with just holding down L and clicking. That's just going to drop a point light into your scene. Now this comes in with various settings we can control, but I just want to throw this out there. Always, 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 always. Remember, if you want to add a light to your scene, remember to have a light source. So I have these lamps in my scene. We're going to take our first little light here, and we'll move it nearby. I do like how we do get some nice temporary shadows. Oh, I know it's awesome. It looks so good. I'm just going to move it directly underneath that light. Now, I have some settings that I want to set here. We need to talk a little bit about light properties. So I'll select my light and press F4. And if we expand light and light component, we have all kinds of things we can set. The first one, if we open up point light component, we have the radius. This is the maximum radius from the source that the light can possibly travel. So what I'm going to do is set this to 720. The falloff exponent controls the rate at which the light goes from bright to dark. We're going to set this to 4. That means it's going to fall off. It's going to get darker a lot more quickly. Uh, somebody said, is there a way to make an object, mesh, light, whatever, jump to another object? Uh, yes, there is. Um, but I haven't done it in a whole minute. It's, like, it's been a while. It's been a while. I don't remember how to do it. Uh, so uh, let me jump. Let me kind of stay on task here because I'm running way out of time, guys, uh, and I'm really sorry about that. But that's why we're kind of recording this for everybody. Okay, so now underneath light component, we get to change some of the actual factors for the light. We're going to dim it down to about 0.5 and then take the light color and make it kind of a yellowish orange. That's pretty much it. Then, we need to make a copy of this for each one of the, our little light sources here, so I'll just Alt-click a copy. Alt-click a copy. And Alt-click a copy. And then we could grab all four of these. shift alt and drag over like so, and there we go. And you can repeat this all the way around. Now, here's the catch. As you start doing this, you are going to want to build your lights. The more meshes you have in your scene, the more lights you have in your scene, the longer this process is going to take. So I'm not going to be doing it on camera. The whole idea here is to get these set up in a way that looks pretty good when you're previewing, and you're going to have to take the time at some point to build your lighting, see what it's looking like, and make adjustments. Please keep the uh, quality settings for your light builds in mind. So up here you got the little tiny light bulb that I think by default should have an eye next to it, but it may be any one of these. And your red light bulb with a P, that's production lighting. That takes the longest possible amount of time. 
Generally, leave this on preview for as long as you can. Click it once, that's medium, then high, and then production. Just definitely keep that in mind. All right, so that's just a really quick thing over lighting. And I know it's quick, guys. I know it's really fast. But understand, lighting really could be its own class. It could be multiple classes. I can go on and on and on. The next thing I'm going to cover um, kind of quickly is the ability to add ambient sounds into your level. I'm just going to do this with a single sound. Uh, let me go back to my content browser. Hey, Zach, I'm going to help you out. Yeah. Take a deep breath. Exhale. I have air intakes for this stuff, guys. I have no, it's, it's all. It's all good. I don't, I don't have to have dinner. And once you're done, I want you to go relax. Have a drink from me. Oh, I'm going to. Then all we're right. going to shift gears and do C sharp. But, but you'll be, be somewhere, somewhere drinking. So. I'll be drunk. Yes. I'm going to be here. All right, right, but so, don't stress. I still have an hour and seven minutes. All right, but, but I'm going to give you a little bit of time, so watch this. Okay. okay. So under our sound cues, notice I took my filter and I checked sound cues. Mm -hmm. I come over here and check. Uh, somebody said maybe to stop working. Try restarting your browser. I mean, we could have crashed it, I suppose. Uh, we're going to set this to engine. See what we find. Do we find anything? Yep, we have all kinds of engine loops. Double click these and find one that you like. You want one that definitely says loop because you don't want it to ever end. Okay? I'm going to grab the mantle loop. I'm not going to worry about testing it here on video, but if, if you wanted to, you can double click and it'll start playing. Yeah. It, it's still playing. And then if you right click on it, you can choose stop sound and that'll shut it up. Okay. So now what we're going to do is with that selected, just come over here into your level. And this is so great. You right click. Unreal knows that you have that selected. And it'll say add ambient sound engine loop. There it is right there. And we're going to leave this down here on the ground floor around all those generators. If you hit F4 and open up the properties for this guy, you have the audio component, which allows you to change out the sound cue for anything else you might need to change it to. If you expand, let's see, audio sound, we don't need to change any of that. We, we can also change our pitch and our volume, and that's, of course, very cool. If we needed to change the overall radius, we'd actually have to change that at the sound cue level, so we're not going to uh, explore that here in this uh, particular video. That'll be something we can look at a little bit later down the road if folks really want to see that. But if I come back out here to the top floor, and I hit play. Um, can you give a sound again, sir? I sure can. Three, two. And it, it will sound a little faint. So we can hear it a bit. As I move away, it should get fainter. As I get closer, it gets louder. And so on. So really, that's all there is to it. Sexy. Yeah. So that's just a way to... And if you didn't hear anything, then, again, we're... We're kind of rigging that together. What we're doing is literally taking Jason's headphones and holding them up to his microphone. I don't know how that's going to work on the actual recorded video. I know it might sound funny because it's going to be like this double thing. Yeah, it'll be like this weird double effect thing. And we're really sorry about that. We're just trying to make the most of the tech we've got uh, working at the moment. Okay, so there's... I feel like a failure! All right, just kidding. Okay. <laughs> no sound. <laughs> I had to do something to make you laugh. Come okay, on. you're too uptight, Zach. Relax a little. I am relaxed. I am relaxed. We have one more Somebody thing to cover. We're done. And a shot of tequila. One more thing to cover, and we're done. All right. All right. Here we go. The last thing we're going to cover is a post-process volume. Okay. Generally, I like to put these in only where you need them because I don't know. They're just so cool that it's really tempting to use them like everywhere. Uh, but to really show this off, I'm going to file open, and I've got the lit version of our level with all of our lighting in place. And if I say don't save, is this going to crash? It didn't crash. <laughs> wow. I think it's like it's taunting me. It's like, oh, you're expecting a crash, huh? Well, how about you? All right, so this has got all of our lighting in place. Now, to uh, just to kind of clarify. Yeah, we are using the stereo, by the way, Camtasia. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, now, just to kind of clarify, what I want is when we hit the ground floor down here, everything's going to turn green. When we go outside, it's also going to be kind of green. What we need to make this happen is, starting off, we need to make a red builder brush that kind of surrounds this whole area. We have to kind of mark it off. I'm going to come to the side view and hit W to hide away my static meshes. Let's take our red builder brush, and I don't know, I'll click on something located over here to help my red builder brush move around to the right location. 
By the way, just kind of an aside to the audience, you see this nice little cone that I have when I select my light? It's a nice cone. Yeah, or when I select a point light, I get this nice radius. Mm -hmm. If for some reason you don't see these by default, please tap the R key. The R key it is. Yeah. R for radius. It's been that for you forever. Yeah, I know, but in case people don't see it. It is an introduction class. This is basic intro, UDK. Okay, so with this light selected, I'm going to right click, and you know what? I don't even care what size my builder brush is. We're going to just geometry mode the thing anyway. So build, and go away. Select my builder brush. Go into geometry mode. I want all the vertices on this side, and we're going to move them all the way to the back wall. It doesn't have to be precise at all. Let's grab the bottom vertices, and we'll pull those down a bit. We won't worry about the post-processing taking place underneath the water too much. We'll grab these vertices, and we'll slide them all the way out to beyond where anybody could possibly go. And we'll take the top, if I can get to both the top vertices, and it looks like I did. And we'll slide those up a little bit to kind of snug them on the underside of that floor. Now, we do need to check the other direction as well, so I'll just take the top view. And let's grab this side, slide those out. Grab this side, slide those out. You just want a big brush that encompasses them. just want a big brush. Sometimes you just want a big brush. Right. All right, once you have that, right-click on volumes. And we're going to add in... What are we going to add? A po <laughs> it's like my brain just totally locked up. Uh, we want a post-process volume. And I'll move the build brush out of the way. It's this pale pink thing here. And now you see it surrounds everything. Now I do want to point this out. Check it out. In perspective, you see this little button? Post-process volume previs. If this is not on, everything we do will look like nothing's happening. So make sure that's up. Next, with your new volume selected, press the F4 key. Open up your post-process volume settings and open up settings, and you have all kinds of stuff you can turn on and off. So if you don't want Bloom to actually affect this part of the level, turn off Bloom. Kill it. What we're going to do, actually, is we're, we want, we're going to have more Bloom. I know somebody earlier said they hated Bloom, so we're going to have more Bloom. <laughs> more cowbell. That's going to be Bloom. I gotta have more count. Uh, we're gonna take our bloom threshold and set that to 0.5. Lowering that means that uh, dimmer values will start to create bloom. In effect, that means you get more bloom out for your buck. Take your bloom tint and make that a pale green color. Next, we're gonna change the midtones of our scene. You can do full scale color correction in here if you can dig that. Like for example, we have scene desaturation. Set that to one. Black and white scene. So awesome! I love it. Immediate black and white. Done. And then, if you want to, on top of that, you can say Scene Colorize. Expand that, and let's say, I don't know, take X, which, by the way, is the same as red. So X, Y, Z equals RGB. Death. Set that to 2. Nice. And now you've made everything red. So you have all kinds of fun stuff you can do here. But we don't want to desaturate. What we're going to do instead is take our midtones, and we're going to take Y. Y is green. Remember, again, X, Y, Z equals RGB. So X is red, Y is green, Z is blue. We're going to take our Y's and pull that value down to about 0.8. And you'll notice that just starts to tint everything toward green. And if you can't see it, turn the volume previs on and off a few times. And the lower you set that, the more obnoxious the effect is going to be. So I mean, if you wanted to, you set it all the way down to like 0.2. All right, that's too obnoxious. Yeah. So it's like green gas is killing us all. We'll leave it at 0.8. So it's just a nice tone. All right. Now, let's go ahead and, oh, by the way, uh, also be aware if you're trying to visualize this, it only works when you're inside the volume. If you, volume. Yeah, if you step outside the volume, it stops working. That's right. Post-process volume. Yep. All right. So what I'm going to do real quick is open up my final version of the map, only because in this one lighting is built and all that stuff. And it's still playing. Um, it, it didn't crash. It, uh, I'm just. I'm scared. We're just. Yeah. I'm like terrified. All right. Paths need to be rebuilt, but that's okay. All right. Th they know their sound. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Yeah. All right. What I want to show though is as you go downstairs, you get this nice shift as you enter that post-process volume. You can kind of feel it. It starts off all gray, and then you get a nice shift over time into green. And then we have green all over everything.
Now, now this, this is a really obnoxious green. green. I know that. But it's just there, kind of, kind of show you how it's working. I agree with Jim. The basement's radioactive. Stay out of there. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't go down in the basement. Now, guys, outside of just building everything, that's it. That's my demonstration. At this point, you have a level that you can play. Uh, there, there are, are other, other things, things that we can talk, talk about. There are millions of other things. There are. Talk. Here's something I want to do. Yeah. I want to ask for those of you that if I can get a favor from some of you, all of you, fire off an email. Anyone who feels like helping me, fire off an email to Mark Rain and just tell them. I just tell them that uh, we hosted a free UDK um, webinar, a live class. Let them know it was a live class. And uh, Mark Rain. But I think it's. Uh, no, no, do, do Mark, Mark Rain, not Tim Sweeney. Sweeney. Leave, Leave poor Tim alone. <laughs> Tim got enough to do. Um, I don't know if it's, is it mark.rain at epicgames.com? I'm not sure, but you can find it. Just, just tell them that 3D Buzz did a free webinar. And uh, tell them you guys thought it was awesome. <laughs> well, hopefully you guys thought it was awesome. I mean, we did go a little bit above and beyond, you know, just here's the UI. Yeah, and I'm sorry to have to kind of rush toward the end, but it has been a while. We do have stuff we've got to do. This is hours, hours long. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan just cracked me up and said, should we say it never crashed? It, it stopped crashing. crashing. Yeah, it, it just... It, can, can somebody, uh, can somebody, somebody spell out Mark Rain's name over in the IRC? Or Zach, can you? R-E-I-N. R-E-I-N. Yeah, don't... No, R-E-I-N. Yeah, go ahead. So search Mark Rain Epic Games email... Hey, or Twitter. Twitter. Generally pretty open, open to the public. public. Yes, yes, he's very. That's, that's the, the only reason, reason I'm saying it. it. He, he is open to the public. public. He's still going to probably hate you a little. Well, that's okay. <laughs> I, that's okay. <laughs> I wanted to know we did this. <laughs> Epic has no idea. We threw this together really quickly for you guys. We thought you would enjoy it. Hopefully, there are some of you guys that have picked up a few things from this. Um, quite an impressive Kismet course. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I didn't mean for it to be. I actually wanted it to be simple. And then the the lifts that we created, the little mover lifts. I was like, God, these suck. We need, <laughs> like, it, it was hard for me to play the level because like, I felt like I kept jumping down elevator shafts. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I had to make something that looked a little better. So, yeah, he is on Twitter, as Robert uh, pointed out over on the question panel. And I believe I saw the uh, something from NATO. How long was the class? Jeez, and all? What time is it now? I don't started know, at three. It's probably about six hours. Five, six, six, seven, eight. What, five, five hours? Five hours. So it's been about so five it's, hours. It's, it's, yeah, just over five hours. And, you know, just a huge... Uh, I realize not everybody can stay, okay? And that's yeah, fine. If you, if you had to break out and you're watching this later, that's awesome, and thank you for watching it later. Uh, if you actually stuck with us through the whole five hours live, high five, man. Yeah, no, hit. there you go. Yeah. That, that is, is an internet, internet high five, five to you. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Like, put your hand up on against your monitor right now. Yeah. Put, ready? Put, touch ready? your monitor. Here. All right. All right. Thank, Thank God I got three monitors, monitors here. here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and yeah, anyone, anyone who just put, just put their, their hand, hand through, through the monitor. The monitor yeah, sorry. then you touch too hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We said <laughs> touch, not So we said don't touch the LCD. You know, you can clean it later. Wipe it off later. So anyway, so it, was a, it was a lot of fun, and we really want to thank you guys for joining. Very impressed with those of you that were able to uh, to, to hang out with us. Like 100 people are still here. It's, yeah, I know. And yeah, we started out with a massive amount, then we did a, a good job of getting rid of about 60 after I announced that this was an intro course. I still think you did a great job with a whole lot of different areas. Oh, man. Um, I mean... Yeah, see, look at that. Yeah, Grey Wolf. Wolf. This, this is, is an, an intro? intro? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe an intro, intro plus, plus, right? Intro plus plus. But, but um, tomorrow, tomorrow, um, tomorrow, 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 Period. Yeah, and the classes are all still available, even the ones that we've already held. They're all recorded, ready for you to watch whenever you That's right, but our classes are um, much, much smaller than the number that we're dealing with now in, in this free class. And so it's, it's a lot easier for us to interact and answer all of the questions, which is awesome. And the C-sharp class, we teach that twice a week, has been absolutely amazing. And the Blender class every Saturday has also been amazing. Tomorrow, registration is going to go up for the new Intro to C++ class. Um, Get, I'll, I'll make sure, make sure that everyone, everyone that's a member sponsor, sponsor gets in on that, but after this weekend, people that are signing up might be just a little bit too late because we can't. It's going to fill. It's going to fill because we have to be able to um, 
um, give people personal attention. Uh, several, several people are asking when the recording video will be it's up. Gonna end up. It's going to end up being tomorrow. Yeah, it'll, it'll have to be because here in just a little while we have a C-sharp class that'll probably run past midnight. Yeah, in about 50 minutes from now we've got to get the C-sharp class going. And yeah, it always seems to run past midnight. So, um, But uh, anyways, this will be available for you guys on, um, on the web by uh, tomorrow. And then also, uh, let's see. Yeah, we do have a, 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 a tight schedule, but we do what we can for you guys, that's for sure. Um, yeah, the Blender one broke 3D Buzz. <laughs> and he got famous. Chris, <laughs> And he got famous. That's oh, the best. Nato, Way to go, Nato. Nato. That was brilliant. And you're famous. And you are famous. So, <laughs> that was awesome. But, um... Tomorrow, the, uh, the C++ course will go up, and also, there is a possibility that the UDK first six-week course will also be announced, be announced for registration. So, we're, we're wanting to get both of these going very soon. Yep. So, keep a watch tomorrow, 3D Buzz in the lounge area, and if you're a member sponsor, also over in the member sponsor area. And I just want to throw this out there. Thank you guys so much for showing interest in UDK. Uh, yeah. I mean, I know, I know UDK, UDK is awesome, awesome and I've known for a while. I also know we've been doing a lot of Unity stuff uh, here in a while. It's been a while since we've put some new UDK content. It's really great to see folks jumping back on and, and hanging out with us and learning. And Unreal's fun, but man, I still love me some Unity. Oh, I, I love them both. There's, there's lots of reasons, too. But um, UDK is hard. No, it's not. Mage Manic, you're about to be demoted. <laughs> Unity seems, seems hard. hard. No, no Unity, Unity is not hard. hard. Unity, Unity is easy. Unity, Unity is, is also free. free. Standard, Standard is. is. Yeah. Um, oh, I oh, think, I think if, in, case in case you guys, you guys don't, don't know this, this um, the, yeah, 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 right, right now, now, thank, thank you very, very much, much um, CN00, TCN, and the rest of the alphabet. Unity Mobile is currently free right now. Through April 8th. Through April 8th. So, if you're a member sponsor and you're planning on taking our... Our uh, uh, Android, Android Unity yeah. class. Uh, uh, please make sure to take it now. Yeah, yeah, get, get it, it because, because it's free. free. Um, uh, do, do not miss that opportunity. Get both iOS and the Android. Android. Standard, Standard version iPhone, iPhone again. There's, there's no charge on it. It's absolutely free, free and you get, get to keep, keep it. it. And yeah, after it's a, not the Pro edition. No, it's not Pro. But after after April the eighth, the deal's over. And, and it goes, goes back, back up to uh, $500 or $400 and some odd dollars. So between the two, it's close to a $1,000 savings. Alex, Alex Rodriguez, Rodriguez says you need a license to publish work. But you don't need a license to learn it. You don't need a license to learn it. And you can't, and you can't, you can't learn, learn it any other way because they don't have, they don't just regularly hand that out. It's, it is a special thing. With the, uh, Chris, with the pure Android class uh, that we're looking at, we're going to be using Android for uh, Mono, or Mono for Android, excuse me. And Zach has already called and talked with them. And you guys will be able, to, all of our students will be able to grab a, uh, a free version for educational purposes. You can do everything but publish. Yep. So, so that means you'll be able to follow along and the whole nine yards. yards. So, uh, so anyways, yeah, yeah just, just there, there you go. go. So, so a, a few last-minute uh, uh, tidbits, tidbits that are good, good ones, ones, I think. Yeah. But, yeah, but yeah, if you guys, guys can, can, let Mark Rain or the guys over at Epic know that, that we did this and that you guys had a good time. time. And we're out of here. Thank you very much. And we'll see you around on 3D Buzz. And for those of you in my C-Sharp class, I will see you guys in like 45 minutes. So quickly, go get something to eat. Bye, guys. We're out of here. Goodbye. Hello? Hello? I'll, call I'll call you in a minute, Nelson. The, the organizer, organizer has ended the session, session and this call will be disconnected. disconnected. Goodbye. Goodbye.